Welcome to our Daily Bread, I'm Father Paul Seil, and today we're on the road and I'm driving to the east side of Buffalo, New York, and we're gonna visit the Mother Teresa Home, a very special ministry for women who are expecting children. And at the home today, we're gonna to make a few things, I understand, tabbouleh and uh, eggplant parmesan, and we're also gonna make stuffed peppers, and all of the vegetables are coming from the little garden they have at the Mother Teresa home. Cheryl Caleri is the executive director of the home along with her husband, David. So don't go away because this is our daily bread. Cheryl, thanks for welcoming me here today. This is my first visit to the Mother Teresa home here. And this used to be St. Adelbert's uh, Rectory, right? Correct, Father. Can you show me around? This home never had a chapel, but we made a chapel, Father, and I'd like to invite you in to see oh, I'd, I'd love how to. beautiful yes, it is. Very beautiful. This chapel is dedicated to St. Joseph, who is the patron of our diocese, and you also have some Josephs in your family, I understand. Yes. Your late father was named Joseph, Correct. so it's a perfect uh, dedication. But the first thing I notice when I come in is the beautiful, uh, the altar, the, the little pulpit here, and where the tabernacle with the Blessed Sacrament is, they all match so beautifully. And you also have uh, this incredible, these stained glass windows here. The window to the far left is the St. Gianna, symbol of the society. So Christ, the wedding rings for Gianna and her husband Pietro. The four large buds are for her living children and the two small buds are for her uh, births that she lost. Mother Teresa, um, who is the center of everything here. And then of course on the right, the Holy Spirit, which has really um, driven me through this entire process um, with being blessed to be able to have this home for moms and their babies. I see, this is terrific. And so uh, what's through the door? Well, we're gonna go, go see. Here? Okay. Father Paul, I really wanted you to see this portrait because it's such an important part of how this house came about. Um, I was praying um, in adoration and Mother Teresa came to my mind because one person at a time is my theory too of how we can help and make a difference in the world. And I thought, woman of the world, children of the world. And I walked into a, a little shop on Elmwood and I was out on my lunch hour with my friend and I admired this portrait that an artist had done. And uh, he said to me, I heard about what you want to do. And he said, if you like that, it's yours. I'm donating really? it. And I said, oh my goodness. I don't know if I could accept this. I don't even have a Mother Teresa home yet. Uh -huh. He said, but after hearing your story and knowing what this is all about, I know you're going to. I see you have a, an icon, a, a picture of the icon of Our Lady of Częstochowa. Yes. Very popular in the Polish community especially. Yes. And this was a Polish neighborhood, very strong right. Polish neighborhood years ago here on the east side of Buffalo. And I understand that a, a very special dinner took place right here. Exactly. And it was with the Cardinal Archbishop of Krakow. Right. Who was Cardinal Karol Watiwa, right, who became St. John Paul II. Exactly. So he ate right at this table, huh? One thing that we're excited about is we left this room, which has now been renamed the Pope Francis dining room, so that the women can uh, join us in dinner here for the holidays, for special occasions. Uh, we've also been blessed to have many uh, meetings of the deacons and their wives, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really been a blessing to keep this room as is. Now, speaking of the Pope Francis room, I think that's a very key component of the whole house because it was a couple of years ago that Pope Francis called for the year of mercy, and he asked that every diocese in the world set up some program or institution or some kind of a permanent symbol which would point to God's mercy. Exactly. And in the Diocese of Buffalo, that is this house, correct? That, that is correct, Father. Mm -hmm. We're very blessed the Mother Teresa home was uh, chosen and dedicated last year, August 25th, on the uh, vigil of Mother Teresa's birthday. Um, and we were fortunate to, to go to her canonization, David and I, uh, and it was just a beautiful event. It must have been, yes. yeah. Now I'm getting kind of hungry though. Uh, I we know, we probably should go to the garden, garden and pick okay, out some things. Let's go. All right. This is a beautiful garden. The Garden of Life. The Garden of Life, all right. Everything's named here, like you said. And these are eggplants? Correct. Eggplant bushes or? What do you call them? Yep. Now we're gonna need some eggplant for later. I'm gonna, ow, oh, I didn't know they were sharp. I've never seen an eggplant plant. Ow. Wow, you're gonna put the whole plant out there, off? Father. You just uh, twist just it or? Twist it off. Ow, 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 ow. 
See? Not as easy as I thought it would be. Every wonderful man needs a wonderful woman, right? Yes. Well, I, I'm kind a priest. I, uh, but, you know, you I'm have the Blessed Mother. Oh, okay. Well, she's not going to pick this eggplant for us, is she? Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Cheryl, how did you decide what you were going to plant out here? Well, we tried to, de tried to plant things that we knew that they could use in the different recipes that we've developed uh -huh. for the girls to be able to cook fresh in the garden. Well, we're finally in the kitchen at the Mother Teresa home, and joining us now is Sarah Molitore. Molitore. Yes. Okay, I almost got it. I'm sorry. What kind of name is Molitore? German. German, okay. What's Sarah's position here? What does she do? Sarah is really my uh, right hand person here. She helps me in the home during the day, she helps the girls. Uh, preparing meals, she helps with appointments and getting them connected to services. Great. Hey, and we're making some tabbouleh now. Tell me, what would you say is the main mission and what really goes on here at the Mother Teresa Home? The Mother Teresa Home is to empower women. Um, what we have done here is provided a sanctuary where the women can actually come if they've decided to choose life, maybe hit a bump in the road, they need a place to stay. We help provide them with services, with education, uh, connections to doctors, whatever it is that they might need uh, for the short period of time that they're here. We put them on a journey, on a plan on where they can live uh, after the Mother Teresa home and to make their lives better for themselves, for their babies and their families. You said that you provide a sanctuary for women who choose life. What does that really mean? Specifically, Father, um, most of them come to us uh, for the first time being pregnant. Although we, on occasion, have women who have just delivered a child, so it could be a mom that has a newborn, and we help provide them with those parenting classes and the skills and things that they need to be a good parent. Interestingly enough, we have a great referral service from our area, hospitals, doctors, different uh, churches, organizations, nobody is turned away. We have a referral process where they can sign up a uh, referral online and then Sarah and I uh, work with those referrals and those agencies to try to see if they're a good fit for the home. Do you welcome volunteers here or not? We're always looking for people to volunteer and to help. We have right on our website, again, a volunteer sign-up sheet. We have everything from helping us in the garden to helping us in the house to helping us with shopping helping the girls, so we have a Bible study, so there's many activities and things that you can get involved in right here at the Mother Teresa home. I know, Tabuli, you got this, this is the bulgur, right? That is correct. And what else we got? We've got tomatoes, this is a pretty traditional, is this a, uh, what type of nationality, is this Lebanese or something? Well, here you go, thank you, Father. Okay. I have to get a little something in here. Everyone thinks I'm Italian, because my husband's Italian, we eat a lot of Italian food. But my family is actually uh, from Lebanese and Polish descent. Uh -huh. And uh, one of our favorite dishes is the tabbouleh. We use it as our salad and we use it as uh, garnishing for many of our meals. So since we're gonna be uh, moving on to the main dish that's Italian, I wanted to start out with our traditional uh, tabbouleh. Um, it's a very simple dish to make and one of the reasons that we chose it for here in the home, one of the recipes, is all of the ingredients um, except for the bulgur wheat, are grown right outside in the garden. And who's the cook who cooks here? David, my husband, is usually home first. Okay. So he usually helps get things started for us. He's actually been an official cook for me for, uh, and our family for years, and now I've just transferred that right here to the Mother Teresa home. How do we make the tabbouleh? Okay, we got the bulgur wheat. What do, we do. Do we start with that? We do, but I'm going to tell you what I did. What do you do with this? Well, you take the bulgur wheat, and for every cup of it, you're going to add a cup of boiling water. Oh, interesting. And okay. then you put a little dry parsley in there, too. Uh-huh. And you put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil in it. Okay, terrific. Okay. And then you cover it, and you leave it in the refrigerator overnight. Got it. There we go, good. All right, so we got tabbouleh, so we do. I'm getting hungry too. And don't go away, we'll be right back to our daily bread. Welcome back to our Daily Bread, where we're on the road at the Mother Teresa home on the east side of Buffalo, New York, and we had some tabbouleh that we made with fresh vegetables from the garden, and now David Caleri, this is his, her husband, you know, the woman who is here, this is 
her spouse, her yeah. husband. Yeah. Now this is the eggplant that we got out of the garden. Although I see you have some started already for us, right? So we're going to be making some eggplant parmigiana. Is that right? That's right. And I'm going to put a little oil in the pan to get it going a little for us. How long have you lived here? We've been here for two years. How long are you going to live here? Uh, we have a, a, a deal, so to speak, with our, with our uh, beloved bishop uh, for a five-year. Uh, of course, it, it's um, renewable. If we what do. happens if you don't renew it? What will you do? Oh, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Up, how do you just say, oh, we're going to move out of our house and we're going to move here? Well, my, it's my wife. She's so uh -huh. wonderful, and uh, it's a part, part of her work, and I'm happy to be um, part of what she's doing. I'm part of her life, uh, and I'm sanctified by my wife. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to uh, assist, help uh, in any way, shape, or form that she needs me to. Okay. How do you assist here, then, in any way, shape, or form? Do you cook every day? I cook every day. You do? For, I do. For everybody in the house? Or well, we, mostly for us upstairs, but uh, there is occasions oh. that we, uh, we cook for, uh, for the girls, uh, uh -huh. our, our residents. Um, we have cooking classes, uh, that sort of thing, where I teach them how to make these oh, types of items. Oh, you teach them how to, uh, yes. How is that going? Well, uh, um, we sit around kind of like what we're doing right here, and I, I go through the steps of how to make uh, certain items. Uh-huh. And it's a lot of fun. The kid, the, what they, what do you find that the women like to make the most? Is there one type of food, or is there a type of food you teach? You know, I think Italian food is always good because it's always, almost always for a crowd. My favorite meal to teach is, uh, is sauce. Oh, good. Spaghetti meatballs, sausage, uh, a nice salad, and they seem to enjoy that. Now, you know, do you have children, you and Cheryl? I don't even know. Yes, we have five children between us. And what are their age ranges? Are any of them at home? In, in no, no, no. They're all they're um, older and they've, uh, they're all grown up. Uh, they have Some of them have their own families and um, uh, they're, they're carrying on with their lives. So. Now, when did you, when you were moving into this place, did they have any concerns? Did they express anything? Oh, yes. Did you have a meeting with them or uh, something? No or meetings. No meetings. No meetings, okay. Uh, well, this is what we were going to do and uh, no one's going to tell us not to. Got it. Okay, yeah. <laughs> But uh, um, yes, they did. They did. They did voice their concerns when we said we were moving to the Lower East Side. Um, they said, "Really? Why would you do such a thing?" And then, of course, we would explain what the what uh, our situation was and how right. uh, um, my wife's ministry and how it worked and. Uh, uh, how, how much uh, she was uh, dedicated to what she was doing. Well, let me get this, uh, let's do some more of this first. This is the, what do, I, what do you want me to do here? So what I want you to do is I want you to lightly bread. I'm going to put from, from here into the breading, into the, right, in the pan. Into, right into the pan. If the women in the house don't eat, you know, I mean, where, where do they eat? Do they well, they, they make their own meals here. They do. So we teach them, we teach them, give them the tools. Yes. And of perfect. course the food to, um, to make their own meals. Now, what about the uh, religious background? This is clearly a Catholic project and a sure. Catholic ministry, a Catholic house. Every room is named after a different saint. That's right. Um, so uh, do the women, how do they respond to this? Are most of the people you have here Catholic? Is there any restriction? What's the story? Actually, to be honest, um, I don't think we've had maybe one who is actually um, uh, Catholic. Uh -huh. uh, we're ecumenical. So right. we cater to all walks of life. They could be atheists, it doesn't matter. We are here to help. And um, if we can spread the word of God in our own way, then we do so. So we've got our fried eggplant done. I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper on it, okay? Mm-hmm. A little bit of pepper, just to season it, okay? Nice. All right, now what do we do, David? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a layer. Uh, maybe we can get one and a half layers on there and that would be fine. Like that? You're gonna take the layer. How and close? Then, uh, they can be pretty close. Why don't we move this one up a little bit? Oh, Ooh, they're warm. Close, not, yeah, they're warm. They're nice and warm. Uh, but anyway, so what happens next? So what we do is now we take a layer. Uh, we put a layer of sauce. Okay. We lay the, the, lay the layer on top, and then as I'm doing that, you can put some more of the, uh, the cheese on, on the top okay. there. As I'm, uh, what kind of cheese is this, just out of curiosity? That's Romano. Oh, Romano. And yeah. the other uh, mix is a mixture of Asiago, uh, and Parmesan, and I believe there is... This uh, Romano, Pecorino Romano, that's a goat cheese. No, not goat cheese. Goat no, milk cheese? 
No. Pecorino Romano is. Oh, then I'm learning something today. Yeah, it's cheese. a little bit saltier. The, yeah, the other beautiful. cheeses are. Uh, I like the Romano because it's it's a little um, it's smoother. It's a little, yeah. And it's a little more um, what do you want to call it? Uh, moist. Okay. Than the others. Well, if we're you know somebody will write in or call us to tell us yeah, I'm more sure. about that. Yeah, that's so. okay. There we go. I'm, I'm always say, I'm always willing. What to am learn. I saving cheese for? Always willing. What to are we learn doing with the basil? Oh, that you can garnish. Put a little bit of uh, before we cook or after. Put it right now. Okay. Let it cook. Beautiful. So this is going to go in the oven for about how long? For about, Everything's really cooked in it. Well, some of it is cooked in the bottom. I, I didn't put it in the oven, though. I did kind of what we did here yesterday. Uh -huh. So it needs to go in for about half an hour. Okay. Between a half hour, 45 minutes at 350 degrees. Got it. Look at that. You're making Basilico. the sign of the cross. I like that. Oh, am I? Oh, gee. Hey, you didn't even know. I didn't even know. I knew. Are you kidding me? <laughs> You want to, we got one more recipe for today. We're going to come back with more of our daily bread right after this. Don't go away. Come back to see us at the Mother Teresa home. Welcome back to our Daily Bread, where we have made tabbouleh, we made eggplant parmesan, and now we're making some stuffed peppers. And these peppers are beautiful, David. They're right from your garden. Oh, absolutely. Now, I am very sensitive to hot peppers, so let me ask you, are these hot peppers? These are not as hot. They're not, they're, they're a you little... Say medium hot. Yeah, I would not, say yeah. medium or less, between not hot and medium. Okay. So these are definitely something that and you... And what about the other ones? These are hot. What do you these call are those? What these kind are the are they? cherry peppers. Cher oh, like the ones you get in the jar that yeah, never look that, like exactly. these are beautiful. Yeah, they're wonderful. So you're going to put cheese in those? Yes. The, What's the, in your cheese mixture? The mixture is um, uh, cream cheese, a uh, combination of Romano, uh, we also have Asiago, also uh, sausage that we fried, oh, you put sausage in fried up with um, onion and garlic, Okay. and some uh, basil, fresh basil. And these stuffed peppers have... Uh, ground beef that you've cooked with some onion. Is there pepper in there? A little, a little, peppers, a little, little bit peppers. of a leftover pepper. Yeah. I didn't want to throw it out, so I cut it up. And you put in some fine. tomato sauce? Is and I put it? tomato sauce, and okay. I, I, I par-cooked the, the rice, so it would cook okay. fully and wouldn't be too mushy once it's made in the oven. Now, you want, the, is this, oh, these are kind of, you tightly pack these, it looks like. Yeah, it's okay, I, they'll, they'll settle in there. Okay. And these go in the oven about how long? Uh, those are about peppers. 45 minutes oh. at 350. And uh -huh. uh, you want to check them every, periodically, make sure that um, nothing's uh, getting too, too cooked, too much. OK. Uh, Is there cheese in this too or not? But not a lot. All right. Now, we're gonna, you're going to cook these, as we said. I, I, by the way, you can get all of the recipes at odbtv.org. ODBTV for our daily bread TV, ODBTV.org. Let's put these in. I'm going to meet you in a couple of minutes yes. in the dining room. I'm going to have a little talk with one of your friends. Wonderful. And uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you so Thank much, you, David. Clary, you live here at the Mother Teresa house, right? Yes. How long have you been here? I've been here for almost two weeks at least. Two weeks? Yeah. Two or three weeks. Yeah. How, how did you end up coming to this this wonderful little house? I was, at, um, I was working at Dollar General. And I was very curious as to what I wanted to do as far as getting an abortion or choosing life. And there was this lady, a customer, who came up to my register and she had an Asian child with her. And I asked her, you know, for an opinion. So I asked her, what would you think I should do? Or who do, should I go to to... to choose whether I should get an abortion or put the baby up for adoption. And she told me that she wanted to speak to me on the phone, so we exchanged numbers, and later I met, I met her. I met um, Cheryl. You met Cheryl Caleri because you were working at the Dollar General, and a woman there with an Asian child 
and the woman was not Asian, so you thought the child was yes. adopted, mm -hmm. and, and the, the child was. Mm -hmm. And that woman connected you with Cheryl? Yes. Isn't that a remarkable story? Yeah. Wow. So you, you've made a decision then for yourself that you're going to choose to have this baby. Yeah, it's going to be rough, but yeah, I chose to it's keep be it. Rough, yeah. Um, and you already have a child, a, a son? A daughter. A daughter. She's five months. She's five months old. So, so you've got a lot on your plate. And how old are you? Twenty. Twenty for so for someone twenty. Um, what do you feel about this Mother Teresa home? Do you get support here? Does it, does it feel like you're kind of, I don't know. I like it here, um, with me being new and all. I was kind of like scared and I had a lot of trust issues, mm -hmm. but. I really, I get a lot of help here. They're nice people, so I enjoy this. I enjoy being able to get the help I need and go from there. So this place, um, they kind of describe it to me as like a sanctuary, a place you can come to kind of, you know, I don't know, rest or chill out or kind of let your mind be free of some of the worries. Do you find that here? It's, it helps me a lot here. I do be at peace. I have quiet. I can think, but... There's still a lot to think about. Well, let me go get some food. We're going to get some food. We're going to have a little meal with uh, everybody to wind up the show. Thanks so much. No problem. God bless you. Now, we've got a wonderful bounty from the garden. Also, Deacon Mike Dulak and his wife Lynn have joined us at the table. And you're here, Mike, because you're involved in this ministry, aren't you? I am. Yeah. I met Cheryl in formation at St. John Amola Room. And uh, after ordination, I was placed in the pro-life office. And uh, amazing place to work with amazing people. Wonderful. And we got all this beautiful food that we made today, mostly from the garden right here, which is a, is a great thing. So, Deacon, would you do the pleasure and the honor and uh, say the prayers for us? Heavenly Father, we rejoice in your love uh, and in life and all the, the many blessings you've given us today. Uh, today, we're especially grateful that we have friends who cook so well and uh, we accept the gratitude of our hearts uh, as we pray for this food and this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Well, let's eat, everybody. Okay, go right ahead. Tabbouleh, eggplant, stuffed peppers. Let's go, let's go. Manja, manja. Give me, yeah, that's like that size. That's great. No problem. That's all right. Just, I don't mind. It's all the same. Oh, I didn't touch mine yet. Try a little. Is there mint in the tabbouleh? Well, thanks for joining us on our Daily Bread. Remember, you can watch all of our programs on the, the Daybreak YouTube channel. And you can also get all of the recipes you want by going to our website or calling our phone number that you see on the screen. Welcome to our Daily Bread. I'm Father Paul Sile, and today we're on the road, and we're making a trip to the east side of Buffalo, and we're going to go to St. Uh, uh, let me do it again. Okay. Almost everything else is going to come right from the garden at the Mother Teresa home there. So I hope you'll join us. On, oh, I'm sorry, uh, geez, it was going okay too. But what am I going into? Am, are we going to the opening after this? Is this a cold opening? So don't go away, it's our daily bread or something like that. Okay, great. 